Hello to everyone. Today I would like to share my ideas about learning ecologies and some experiences I have designing them. I want to begin though by showing the position of learning ecologies in the historical trajectory of learning theories. We have to first dispel ourselves of the notion that learning is something that happens only when a teacher or trainer is standing next to a learner. In fact, we learn every day just in the act of engaging with the world. Learning has no boundaries. For example, when I ask the participants in my online courses during an icebreaker, what has been your most significant learning experience? A majority relate a story about learning on the job or in everyday life, not in a classroom. Now also consider the rapid change in our work lives. And you can see that if you have not already shifted at least some of your emphasis as educators to informal learning, and to developing learning ecosystems, now is the time. We all speak about the need for lifelong learning, but often we do little more than offer one-off courses with no follow-up. I think we need to do more for sustainable learning. We need to cross the traditional borders we sometimes put in front of us. Consider this sample historical trajectory from presenter to the mind of the learner and to the community. This may be one of the shortest histories of learning theory you will, you will encounter. While none of these paradigms is wrong, the more current paradigm takes more into consideration. Learning theories have increasingly embraced systems theory and complexity, like all intellectual domains since the early 20th century. Rather than thinking about individual minds, whether we're speaking about the minds of experts or the minds of learners, Learning theories increasingly think about communities of minds and the physical and technological environments in which people live and take action. All theories are based on conceptual models of how things work. Here is that previous traje trajectory now depicting sources of knowledge instead of learning paradigms, from orators to books and prepared instruction to learning environments. None are wrong, and in fact, they are cumulative now let's look closer at the paradigms. Rhetoric is rooted in classical sources, but oration and storytelling has a long tradition wherever you look. Before the invention of the printing press, it was the orator who swayed opinions and transferred knowledge. Rhetoric is rooted in persuasion and argumentation, but the strategies it espouses are also valuable for teaching, which is partly rooted in these goals. Education is not simply knowledge exchange, but cultural propagation as well. When psychology blossomed as a science in the late 19th century in both Europe and America, it opened a new window to understanding why people behaved as they did and also how they learned. Over its first 100 years as a discipline, psychology evolved from behaviorism with its focus on operant conditioning to cognitivism with its focus on information processing, and finally to social and cognitive constructivism, which is actually more philosophy than psychology, but it does have its connections. All these traditions persist, but the relative emphasis has changed. Social constructivism borders on the next phase of learning theories. Ecological theories focus beyond individual minds. While there is a direct line from early constructivism, which spawned a long family of social learning theories, the theories I'm grouping as ecological are also rooted in systems theory. Post-cognitive theories is another useful label, not because cognitive psychology has dominated for so long, but because it has had a lingering influence due to its use of experimental research, which is often seen, perhaps wrongly, as the pinnacle of empirical research. Ecological theories have principles, not prescriptive rules. Working with complex systems requires guidance, not control. You can see from the principles listed here that what the learning theories that I'm talking about have in common is a belief in the fluidity of knowledge, that knowledge is situated in specific practices, that knowledge develops through practice, and that the proper unit of study is much bigger than the individual mind. 
It includes groups of individuals and their environments. Anxiety can arise in the loosening of control this brings as we move from the expert as the locus of control to the ecosystem with its variety of controls and interdependencies, traditional teachers and trainers can feel threatened. Researchers are also challenged to find the best research questions to ask. Correlations are harder to discern. Rather than controlled teaching, guidance and coordination are called for. Rather than controlled experimental research, anthropological and sociological traditions, such as thick description and grounded theory, in other words, messier qualitative approaches, approaches become more useful. Stimulating learning ecologies does not make trainers obsolete, but instead it expands their roles into community builders, coast, coaches, and mentors. It may call for the creation and curation of resource libraries and platforms for communities of practice and the, leaderships that we, and the leadership that these require. Let's look at a few examples. The Trainer Resource Portal grew out of the annual WMO online course for trainers, which has served for over 450 participants since, 200, uh, since 2014. This is a lot of people, but it's still a fraction of the numbers of trainers who need initial and ongoing support and guidance. Recognizing this, an open access portal was created to house all the course readings, examples, and templates that can be applied to training practices. The online course for trainers itself is actually a good example of a learning community because many successful past students are invited back to serve as facilitators and coaches to new students. This both increases their own skills and helps new participants successfully navigate the nine week course. The WMO Integrated Observing System is an ambitious international effort to have all 187 WMO member states utilize a common system for identifying and reporting atmospheric and ocean observations. It is a, it is a multi year effort to help members learn how to use the software tools to map and maintain the database of operations. You can see a portion of one of these tools in the upper right. Traditional training can go only so far, and it was quickly decided that an online learning community would be necessary to help bring all members on board. It can receive as many as eight to 10 posts per week and hosts monthly webinars as well. Building and nurturing a learning ecosystem is a balance of providing just enough impetus, guidance, and control to ensure a healthy environment, but also stepping back to trust that chaos is also a stimulus to learning. It also requires encouraging inter independence in learners to take responsibility for maintaining their own personal learning networks. It requires educators to be role models for assuming this responsibility. In other words, we need to stop focusing only on the trees, but to also see the forest. Another example is the CalMET community of educators in meteorology and related disciplines. It has existed for nearly 30 years now. We meet online and face-to-face -face in alternative years, and we also support this blog. In, sp in spurts, the blog can stimulate valuable sharing. We can find many other examples of learning ecosystems and underlying principles to guide us, but I will stop here due to time constraints. Thanks for your time. I hope this presentation has stimulated some thoughts and questions.